Hey guys, so let's recap Parenthood and the Farewell Season, Season 6, Episode 8, called Aaron Brownstein Must Be Stopped. The title is referring to Max's storyline because we all know he has a super huge crush on Dylan. And this episode he starts off going up to his mom saying, Dad's out of town and I need to know how to ask a girl out. Because he thinks that he can um, continue with the scale of affection that is fluid um, in order to get Dylan's affection for him to move from a two and a half, three-ish to a five. However, he sees her kissing Aaron Brownstein in the kitchen um, at Chambers Academy, and so he automatically goes into, I don't understand, this is bad, I must stop this mode. He hands out flyers that uh, list all the reasons why Aaron Brownstein must be expelled from the school. He goes to his mother and he says, you must expel this guy, you are the administration, you can do that. And this episode really, like, focuses a lot on Christina's different roles. So is she a mom at this point, or is she the principal? We don't know. Um, and it kind of judges based on where she is at this point, because at some point she's like, well, I do care about your feelings, but also I have to recognize that this is a school and you can't be doing these things. And so um, basically what happens is Aaron Brownstein finds out, and he confronts Max, and Max is like, I am way better than you. And, like, he, like, cites specific rational reasons why he's better. I am taller. I am better looking. And so they get into this fist fight, and Dylan's like, guys, stop! Like, Dylan's having a really difficult time being in the middle here, and it's kind of interesting because she goes to Christina at the end and says, oh, Christina, I, I really didn't mean to hurt anybody, and I just wanted to apologize to you. And because we kind of see where she's coming from, which is uh, she's really, like, she doesn't like Max the way that he likes her, but she doesn't want to, you know, be a bad person. She still wants to be his friend, but she just doesn't want to be with him that way. And so when she comes over, she's playing with Nora or she's talking with Christina. She's not playing with Max. Or she's not spending time with Max. And she knows this. Um, Max, like, declares his love for her by giving her this gigantic poster with all the reasons that he likes her. And he includes horses because he knows she likes horses. And she's really, he's really pushy about it, which is, like, his Asperger's coming up because he says, I don't understand. Like, he, he really does not understand why she doesn't like him back. He keeps pestering her about this and he gets really exasperated and animated and she's just, you have to leave me alone, I don't like you. And he's so devastated by this. And this is where Christina becomes mom and switches to mom mode instead of administrator mode. Because before she was like, yeah, you have to go to class, you're not in trouble. But now she runs across the street in the middle of traffic saying, hey, watch it, car, I'm walking here. And she goes to Max and she says, like, this is a huge moment. Uh, I think this is the culmination of Max's storyline in this season. It's when Christina says, I am so proud of you. That was a huge, brave thing to do. And it was so romantic. And someday you are going to feel the same way again about a girl. And it's going to be right because she's going to return those feelings, even though Dylan doesn't now. He's still like pacing and rubbing his hands because he still doesn't understand. But I think what his mother says does make an impression, which is a great goal for great thing for Christina um and at the very end Max comes down to see Dylan she's at his house and she's like I want to still be friends and he's like no we're not friends anymore uh, which is you know it, that's kind of how a relationship would end if one person felt more and the other person didn't it would be we can't be friends because you know I have feelings for you and you just blatantly don't want them let's get into other things um, so the other big thing was uh, Crosby. Um, we know the luncheonette is going downhill and Jasmine knows about it and they're struggling financially and it's really been hitting Crosby because he's just wanted to escape everything um, because he has this pressure of supporting his family. Um, and so Jasmine actually gets a, a temp job. Well, it's not a temp job. It's a filing job at her mother's place. I don't even know what the heck her mother does, but they need a filing person and it pays pretty good. And so now um, Renee is aware of their financial problems, and she's being a total mom about it, like, oh, you could go into real estate, and isn't it great? I was talking to this woman at church, and everybody has financial problems these days, and what it does is embarrass the crap out of Crosby, and he gets mad at Jasmine for, like, talking to her about their problems, but it's actually, like, a legit concern, you know, like, he doesn't want people knowing, because it's, I mean, it insults his like pride really is what it is which is like oh Crosby get over it but really for you know for him it, it hurts him and so he decides to take Amber up on her brilliant offer because Amber is trying to 
you know, make the luncheonette a good source of income and make it successful because that's her dream. So she wants to go to this club and uh, talk to this band, try to sign them. Um, and so she convinces Crosby to go. And Crosby's grabbing his weed and he's ready to go. He's ready to party. He's ready to escape his home problems. Now, when the guy, uh, the bouncer guy, will not let him bring in his weed, he gets really angry with him. He's like, I have a mortgage. I have family and I have problems and this is my night I'm gonna take my weed and I'm going to party and then Amber starts having contractions and she has to go to the hospital and so she you know Crosby's there it's a great uh Crosby and Amber bonding moment because they're like yeah let's have an adventure where's my fun uncle Crosby and then they end up in the hospital and so it turns out it was just Braxton Hicks pretty normal I mean the the promo for this week got us all scared but it, it's fine um Amber and Crosby uh, bond and they like want to believe in the luncheonette and they're not going to give up. Um, the other thing with Amber is that Drew, she didn't want to call Drew when she was in the hospital and that's because Drew is like studying for econ super duper hard because he wants to provide for Amber and he wants to help out with his niece or nephew. Um, and Amber pretty much tells him that you should do what you want to do. I don't want you trying to solve my problems or help me at the sacrifice of your own life. And so he kind of agrees but I don't know if he's going to actually change anything because he said that what he wants to do with his life is help his sister and be there for his sister. Um, so the other thing that happened this episode was with Ruby and Hank. So um, she, uh, when her mom's out of town and she says, oh no, I'm not going to throw any parties. And she gets her dad, she like manipulates her father by telling her that she loves him into letting her stay home alone. And then there's like thousands of people at her house. Well, that's an exaggeration. But there's a keg. There's so much alcohol a lot of people like hooking up you know like crazy decoration it's a serious party you know it's huge hank realizes this and he's sitting in his car like i don't know what to do he's calling his ex-wife like i i don't know what to do like she told me she loves me she's gonna hate me and that's ex exactly what happens he walks in and he's like yeah i'm the dad that means party's over you know it's kind of funny because he really doesn't know how to handle himself so I mean, when the father shows up, that's pretty much what happens in a party. And so he's like, yes, I am the father, therefore, get out. <laughs> so they clean up and he orders her to, you know, clean up. And she's like, I hate you. And it's pretty devastating to him. He doesn't know how to process this. And the wife's like, you know what? I'm just glad you're on my side right now. So things have been getting better with her and Hank since he's told her that he has Asperger's. Uh, he and Ruby actually bond later in the episode because she's grounded and so they can't really do anything else other than him teaching her how to play poker, uh, which is really funny. Joel and Julia were not in this episode to everybody's disappointment. We need to find out what happens after Joel confesses his love and desire to stay married to her at the end of the previous episode. Hopefully we'll get that next week.